Pero mamá. Ay, perdóname. Mi mamá quería que pusiera esta ropa. Mamá, ¿por qué no puedo tener un carro? ¿Por qué no puedo fumar cigarros? ¿Por qué no puedo conquistar los Estados Unidos? ¿Por qué no puedo pasar tiempo con Che? ¿Por qué no puedo revelar contra el United Fruit Company? ¿Por qué no puedo hablar con Nikita? ¿Por qué no puedo hablar con mis compañeros? ¿Por qué no puedo leer el manifesto de comunismo? ¿Por qué no puedo cambiar sociedad para que beneficie a las personas? ¿Por qué no puedo... Uh, ¿Por qué no puedo tomar armas nucleares y usarlos contra los Estados Unidos? Hello everybody and welcome back to this top 10 edition of Wins for Humanity, AP World. On today's show, we'll be discussing the top 10 wins for humanity from 1914 to present. These events take place roughly around World War II, all the way from Eastern Europe to East Asia. And I don't know about you, Sammy, but I think that this list is our best top 10 week. I agree. The next countdown we're about to cover may be the best combination of events we've ever had. With that, that being said, now I think is a good time to kick off, kick off our segment of Top 10 Wins for Humanity. At the top of the countdown, your number 10 win for humanity is the Salt March. This 24-day march from Sambarati Arusham to Dandi, Gandhi and his followers marched in non-violence to protest the British salt tax monopoly in colonial India. Colonial rule, nothing that a little outdoor activity and exercise can't fix. In addition to this march, the first ever Play 60 organization was formed encouraging all Indian colonial children to get outside and participate in 60 minutes of physical activity. And being India, they became valedictorian in 24 days. Impressive. Can you imagine trying to motivate Americans to go on a 240 mile walk? Oh man. At number 9, we have the Tehran Conference. This three-day ego play date consisted of Stalin, FDR, and Winston Churchill, who sat down and discussed strategy, concluding that there should be a second front against Nazi Germany. This was a perfect decision because they gave the world exactly what they needed, more war. Well, I'd sure call that a win for humanity. At number eight, we have Hitler's suicide. Taking place in Eastern Europe, Adolf Hitler, with the pressure of Germany's deteriorating military situation in World War II, came to the conclusion that the best option in his life would be to pop a cap in his skull. In some sick and twisted take on a German Romeo and Juliet, Hitler's wife, Eva Braun, decided after realizing that she wasn't going to become the Queen of Aryan Europe, also took her life in digesting a cyanide capsule. Wow, that couple sure has a flair for the dramatics, Sean. They do indeed, Sammy. They do indeed. Coming in at number seven, we have the partition of India. This win for humanity occurred in 1947 with the creation of two sovereign states of Pakistan and India, only after many years of bloody civil war between Muslims and Hindus in British India. To this day, disputed territories such as Kashmir are continually fought over. Kashmir, like. Like the really soft fabric? No, Sammy. No. At number six, we have the development of fascism in Germany, Italy, and Japan. A political manifestation of fascism growing across the world can be identified in the Axis Alliance. I'm sure capitalists and those in favor of democracy across the world would be very pleased with the growth of fascism. Okay, now we're down to the final five, and the number five win for humanity is Hitler's youth. Seeking to increase their strength and fervor in future generations, the Nazis sponsored the Hitler Youth, which amassed boys between 14 and 18, and taught them party doctrine and training them to be soldiers. In order to accomplish their goal of an ideal race, the woman got pregnant. Great, as if the world needed more hormonal teenagers running around and making babies. I guess MTV wasn't so original after all. At number four, we have The Great Depression. A recession heightened 
by the stock market crash of 1929 and the failure of federal banks to liquidize assets led to a global depression with unemployment in some countries reaching 33%, up to 25% in the United States. Depressing. At number three in the wins for humanity, we have the bombing of Toyota and Subaru. Oh wait, those aren't the bombings, those are car manufacturers. Well, getting back on topic, the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Matt, would you like to take a moment to tell us how that's actually pronounced? Thanks. After declining an unconditional surrender to the Pacific War, the U.S. dropped the little boy on Hiroshima and the fat man on Nagasaki. This event led to the advancement of nuclear science as well as non-proliferation treaties and limits on the bans of nuclear testing. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't want a fat man dropped on me. So, me neither. Coming in at number two, we have the rape of Nanking. You know our species is one of excellence when we glorify raping and killing on national television, like they did in Japan. During this time, hundreds of thousands of Chinese citizens were killed and raped. This event in East Asia led to the development of the idea of war crimes. All this killing and how it was covered by Japanese media makes me worried about what those kids are reading about in the Hunger Games books. Whatever happened to good old Narnia? And with that, your number one win for humanity is the Holocaust. Hello and welcome to the show. Today we are very lucky to have the opportunity to interview the one and only Miao Zhidong. Meow, it is so nice of you to be here. So Meow, tell us, when was the moment when you first realized that you were destined to rule China? Oh, mm -hmm. very interesting. So when did your fascination with communism begin? Meow Mix comes in two varieties, original and seafood okay. rolls, a medley of- Wow. Now, what we've all been dying to know, what was the- oh. Glad to have you back with us, Meow. Now, what we've all been dying to know is, what was the inspiration behind your famous long march of 1934 to 1935? Cat, I'm a kitty cat, and I dance, 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 and I dance, dance, dance. Cat, I'm a cat. And I dance, 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 and I dance, 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 cat. I'm a kitty cat. And I dance, 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 and I dance, 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 cat. How intriguing. Now, what would you say that your most embarrassing moment is? <laughs> Quite right. How do you think that the people within your country felt about those two deadly campaigns? Finally, Meow, if you had one thing to say about the Democratic Party or to the Democratic Party, what would it be? Thank you so much for your time.